The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth. One more day being renewed to the praise of the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To be a witnesses for our Lord who is our God. None other but our Savior, our Christ. Who was in return a witness for the truth. And we now could be a witnesses of his truth on this earth particularly in this unique dispensation of the church age being termed out as Alec Nicetasis, new spiritual species unto Christ. We the believers have been given the great privilege, the great work, the great reality, which has not been given in the past nor will be given in the future. The great privilege to really uphold his word above his name, to be a pillar in the temple of my God. And no lesson we can learn if we are not able to learn a lesson about the importance of the pillar showed for us through Samson. When he had power upon him, he destroyed the two pillars and the word of the Lord stands recorded. While he was alive, how many he killed at the point of death, he killed more than while he was alive. A simple point of truth to tell to you all that pillar which is the main supporting one to the slab where many people came to see when his eyes were pierced teaches to us the importance that even we should be the pillar of God that same pillar and the ground of truth is nothing but the church today the church is nothing but a ground and pillar of truth the church is nothing but where our Lord has invited for us to be in the future church of the heaven. Those who overcome with these things, I shall make him to be a temple in my God. What a privilege we can have in this church age. What a great work we have in this church age. How much our Lord has bestowed upon us in this church age. Therefore, in Galatians 6.14, our Lord says, I have been... In Galatians 6.14, Apostle Paul tells, under the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, I have been crucified to the world, and the world has been crucified to me, and I don't have any access in that. But it's no longer I will live, but Christ who lives in me, because it is He who is going to supply to me all the riches through His Spirit. The riches of spiritual one. If we are not able to have the Shamma, which is the Hebrew word, to hear diligently with undivided concentration, with the purpose of our heart to cling unto my Lord, you believe it or not, dear brethren, you will definitely fall. As Adam failed, to obey the voice of my Lord, to hear diligently the voice of my Lord God Almighty. That's what we find in Genesis 3.17. You have not heard my voice, Shamma. But rather you have neglected my commandment. And you heard the voice of your wife, the woman. So shall the way, the pangs of the pain of birth, the woman has in sorrow. So shall be all the days of your life on this earth. And why I'm telling these things to you all. Many people can recognize when they can really understand what is the pain of a pregnancy woman. And they will have many reasons, many philosophy, many moral lessons on that to say it is better not to have that birth pangs. It is so much painful. 
Even Bible says, the way how the woman travels at her pain, so shall be your sorrow when there is a great terror of the second advent of my Lord. And these things we have been noted to tell again and again. In the exact manner a man also will suffer. A woman during her gestation period and her delivery. But for a man it is a lifetime. Do you know why? Man is the head. And if that man doesn't give number one priority for doctrine to himself and if he doesn't give that number one priority of importance to his wife and to his children then take it granted all the days of his life is going to suffer like the birth pangs our Lord did not choose us for that our Lord chose us to be a witnesses for the truth our Lord chose them to be a witnesses in this angelic conflict when Eve was being fell or was being beguiled by Satan. Before that they were being chosen to be a witnesses for his word, to obey. But our Lord proclaims in Genesis 3.17 to Adam to say, You have not heard the voice. You have not obeyed my command. But rather you have heard the voice of your wife, the pleasure of this earth. For Ecclesiastes 9.9, 9, for an unbeliever as well. A right man to a right woman, that is the pleasure of him. When you really obey to the pleasure of your own will, which is not according to the word of the Lord, or disobeying God's word, what you will have? Sorrow. That's what the word of the Lord teaches to us. The way how the woman will have sorrow during her birth pangs, so will be a man in his entire life of the days on this earth. The same Hebrew word is used for both. Sorrow for a woman during pregnancy and sorrow for a male during his entire life on this earth while tilling the land. And why these things to you all for enlighten? If we today do not obey the Aleke Neketesis polytema privileges voice given to us under the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is the only revelation for us to look that the word of the Lord is alive and powerful. And if we hear the voice of this earth, which is lust of flesh, lust of fire and pride of life, even you will have the same sorrow. Sowing to the wind and ripping war wind without having a firm foundation, without having a solid foundation. Everything will lead into confusions upon confusions upon confusions. It's of a great pain for us to know these things. The solid foundation is nothing but our Lord's word to hear and to obey. To hear with undivided attention and to obey with fulfilling heart, singleness of heart and singleness of mind. Without which it is no way possible for us to please that great Lord. As many people think they have and they have already pleased him by following XYZ bribes. The gap between the scholars or the word of the Lord and the gap between the laymen who are been sitting in the pews has to be filled has to be filled so our Lord sends right past the teachers what the word of the Lord rightly exegetes and what the word of the Lord should be taught and what the word of the Lord is accurately in the word and what the layman in the pew should know weekly ones he can never make it up take it granted it has to be a day by day inculcation with accurate reputation so that even in their sleep when they wake up they should tell the word of the Lord that should be his work and that great sorrow a pastor teacher should take sorrow means labor and that's why he has been appointed with the special ability to teach to preach to tell dig the word from the original languages getting the original text to life and telling the word accurately that is what the gift of a pastor teacher is all about. He doesn't have anything necessary in the world to be worried. Everything will be taken care of by the church. Whom, and if the church is not, then Lord knows how to take care of him because he is a bond slave of Christ. And bond slaves do not earn, they only work. 
and Lord provides, his master provides him the needs. And Paul even tells from Macedonian, men came to supply my needs, I was not a burden to you at all. The only burden, what it has been laid down upon his shoulders, is to make every believer perfect and complete in the knowledge of Christ. Is to train them up, is to teach them up, and is to tell the truth, the truth, the truth alone. And not and never again to compromise in Bible that. It's of a great pain to tell you all these things, dear brother. Very great pain. And Lord really points out to tell to Adam, you have not obeyed my voice, but rather you have hearkened the voice of your wife. And since it is the voice of the wife that you have hearkened, you will certainly have a tough time. The tough time of sorrow. The two Hebrew words being the same. For a woman, the way how she is going to travel the pain in birth, the man, similarly, in his entire days of his life, will be travelling through this pain by hard working, by manual labor. But they were not called for this. They were called to be witnesses for his word. Even we as such, a land flowing with milk and honey, he promised for those people when they could really be a witnesses for his word. And we have been told in this Alekenekatesis period, when we are really obeying his word, he shall do abundantly, exceedingly above all that we could ever imagine, think or even ask in his word. When we are witnesses to his word, when we are following his truth in the midst of this devil's territory. But we are not interested to learn. Neither we are interested even to consider what it is our Lord has given for us. Therefore, Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 17, 16, Lord, I have not hesitated to be a shepherd for thee. I know the wrath of your day, how it would be. Therefore, Lord, you know very well whatever it went from the mouth of my lips. They were right in your sight. And you think that could be possible in the human energy, in the human intellectual mind? No way. Daniel answers us in Daniel chapter 10 verse 16 to tell. It is no way possible, dear brethren, when that vigor of our Lord will come, when His appearance will come, we cannot stand before Him in our vigor, in our ability. It is Lord who has to touch and strengthen us to stand. So is the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher when he has given us this bona fide gift at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, including our eternal life with this spiritual gift, both together. He strengthens us in a day-by-day -day process. He teaches us, he trains our fingers for great battles of the spiritual warfare in this unseen, intensified angelic conflict. He trains us up. He strengthens us up. If He doesn't strengthen us, then there is no strength in us. Therefore, in Second Corinthians chapter 12, When I am weak, then I am strong, said the Apostle Paul. When I am weak, no energy of thinking in the intellectual realm. When you are strong, you should use rebound, the pilling of all the pleroma, the competent pleroma. But special endowment ability, the word of the Lord alone is a special endowment ability. The world doesn't know the word of the Lord God Almighty. This special endowment ability has been given for us in the completed canon. Not just come giving us the information as the Old Testament saints, but given us the New Testament, Alekenikitesis, new spiritual species unto Christ with the one and the only bona fide gift of a pastor teacher after the completion of canon. Because we are been called to be more pure than the Nazarite and no lesser than the apostles. When they could do it, even we could be a witnesses for the truth. For them it was revealed half by half through one apostle some, through one apostle other. 
but for us we have the entire completed canon in our hands and we are not here to get compromised and say lord i couldn't do this lord i couldn't do that and plead ignorance or beg ignorance at the judgment seat of christ we have been called to write the bible as kings the more we honor his word the more is going to honor us back that is his principle He has chosen us to be the kings and priests, says the KJV. Basilia and the Basilion of the Greek. Even in the Greek it is kings, not kingdom. Some manuscripts translated and calling it as a kingdom really lost the essence of being kings. If we are kings of Christ, in Deuteronomy chapter 17 verse 18 our Lord says, what a king ought to do, he has to write the law and one law to be given for correction after he has written and taking back and rewriting once again the corrected copy, keeping both. One submitting to the Torah, one living back with him wherever he goes to rule. And if we are been kings, then where is the Bible we have written from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. And then, for whom you are giving to correct it? To your pastor teacher. He has to cross-check it. If there are any errors or mistakes, again, he has to tell you back. Then once again, you need to write a corrected copy. And taken out, and giving, and doing the things of God. For a pastor teacher, what he has to do? He has to be already written in the original languages of Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. He should not stop. Go back to the interlinear if he doesn't know Hebrew Greek. Take the transliteration of the words and write. And tell them what could be. And teach them what it could be. Because time is very short. Responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is very much. And we cannot compromise by saying this and by asking excuses for this and for that. We need to be readily available. That is what our world is all about. That is what our life is all about. Honor his word. Witnesses for his truth. That's what you have been chosen. Adam left. And he followed something which was a pleasure, frantic search of happiness. Rather than searching the peace of God. That pleasure where which he went to search. What did he find? Sorrow. Today, in the Alake Nicodesus period, if you are not able to follow the rule which is according to Bible doctrine to execute the protocol plan of God of this unique spiritual life, which is used by a spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy and then by spiritual maturity. And if you are not able to execute and to pass down the three stages and to be an MGG for Christ, do you know what you will find? You will find sorrow with great misery. The most miserable, wretched creatures are we when we do not execute the protocol plan of God under the great epi argomai or epi kragomai supply besides the privileges, the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Not just giving you the privileges, but besides all this you have been freely given or freely distributed, the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to invest in you, to teach you, to train you up. That is what your purpose is. That is what your in, that is what our Lord's intention is. Because we have been given the toga varalis. We have been given alakeniketesus. We have been given the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We have been given to put on Christ, our Lord. Everything and anything, whatever you can even imagine or think. And I hardly doubt many people do not even know the 40 things which our Lord does at the moment of salvation to every individual believer. And many morons are entering into the pulpits, not just to shorten the gap between the original word and the practices in the pulpits, but rather to still widen up. That's why the pastor teacher gift is a bona fide spiritual gift. And only to a male believer, never to a female. Not to hearken the voice of the woman. And therefore, she is going to be always yearning for her desire to him. Not in the manner of a sexual one, but to be always longing for him. And whereas the man should be a ruler over her, taken in charge of her, should teach her, should train her up. 
Now he has learnt a lesson which would have been easier for him to really obey first and to really obey God's word would have been better but now he is going to do the teaching to the woman to rule because she has lost the truth and he, she has made him even to lose the truth therefore now the teaching work should be done by the husband to the woman Adam to the Eve therefore no woman should be given the authority to preach as Apostle Paul says I have not given you authority to stand and to preach and to have authority over the man it was not man who has been deceived it was Eve who deceived that's what he meant to say and the true purpose for us is to train your wives so that she can in return train your children the teaching work is a husband a true one who truly cares his family he learns this teaching from the right pastor teacher in the pulpit and he has to lead by an example to his church to his family and the family should learn the word of the Lord from him but many people do not understand these principles though given so simply for us in the original languages and it is a sad part to note great preachers are taking from the English texts which is not a right translation at all they have to go back into the original Hebrew Greek and Aramaic look into the lexicon age look into the dictionaries teach them train them up if you are faithful for Lord's calling and if you are not Lord help you so which way you want to go you decide dear brethren we shall come back and continue tomorrow with our head burden eyes closed the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ without hope and without eternal life in our ability to Lord God the Father that to believe upon Christ that is the moment itself we shall have this eternal truth this eternal truth for is for very simple believing Christ you shall be saved whereas for the believer the great marriage is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth and the truth shall set you free and for the pastor teacher the great marriage is to Kerosothon Lagan herald the word in season or out of season because the diamond from my witnesses for which you have been called Number one, I'm out from my witnesses in dwelling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two, hearers. If there are no ears, dear brother, not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic course will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to simply rightly divide the word of truth. So which way you want to go, you decide, dear brethren. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. And not to worry about the softies, because our Lord, our God, is our strength. Father, we are grateful for the privilege of giving the fellowship through the word. We pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit lend us and challenge us in these things, for we ask it in Christ's name, Sovereign Lord. Amen.